Like the untamed forces of nature, the Predacons are ferocious animal robots who lash out with fury. Swift, savage, and always relying on animal instinct, the Predacons explode into action. There's Dive Bomb, the eagle who can spot a target from a mile up in the sky. Rampage, the tiger who can leap 500 feet. Headstrong, the rhino whose horn can puncture eight feet of solid rock. Tantrum, the buffalo who loves to use brute force. And there's the Predacon commander, Razor Claw, whose claws can whip through steel. Together, they combine into a hair-trigger horror, the giant robot Predaking. Predacons merge to become Predaking! As a warrior, Predaking has no equal. As a weapon, he has no known weaknesses. The Autobots are forced to find new defenses against the mechanical menace, Predaking. Hey guys, welcome to Bleeter Productions. I'm your producer, Lee, and today we have something incredibly special. And it is some more Transformers TCG content. And it's actually a solo mode called the Wild Hunt Kill or be killed. Now, this mode was created by Brian Allen, a member of the Wreck and Rule crew. Now, if you don't know Transformers TCG, Wreck and Rule are quite prominent in the community. So Brian has made a solo mode, which is completely different and completely unique. And I've played it a ton of times and I freaking love it. But I'm gonna talk to you guys about this solo mode and I'm also gonna play a game so you guys can see how it is. And then you guys out there can try it out because trust me, it's definitely worth uh, printing this out and having a go because it is a ton of fun. Okay, so what is the Wild Hunt Kill or Be Killed? It's a solo mode, so you don't have to invite your friends. So during this awkward time of COVID, yeah, this is perfect for people to get back into the game or try something new when it comes to the Transformers. Now, there's a few rules that apply to this scenario and you have to have an only Autobot starting team. So how you would do in the Transformers TCG, you can, you know, mix and match and do whatever. But with this solo play, guys, you have to pick an Autobot team only. So I know I'm a little bit sad, but I'm happy. I got to try out some uh, really cool uh, Autobot lists that I've never really tried before against this. And, and it's been a ton of fun to do that. But also other things that go with this solo mode is the Autobot player, which is us, we get to go first, guys. We always go first against the Predacons. Now, with this mode, there's also an AI behavior deck, which, you know, at the beginning of the game, you shuffle it and it is un believable how this interacts because obviously um, with this mode there are new Predacons that Brian has designed just for this mode and he's reiterated this a ton of times you cannot use these <laughs> you know outside of um, you know, the norm of the Transformers TCG. It's just for the solo build. So when you're drawing these AI behavior cards, you're going to follow what on the card what to do. So for example, let's look at Razor Claw, for example. So on there, you can see there's one, two, and three. You follow these things down to a T and you literally do them, whether it be flipping uh, a a transformer over to transform, so changing it from alt mode to bot mode or bot mode to alt mode, for example, uh, drawing a battle card from their battle deck, and then going into an attack into one of your Autobots. So basically the AI card is something that they're gonna do and you just follow it and it works really, really well. Now, the win condition is quite interesting because you must KO all the Predacon characters and uh, yeah, also no daring escape in your decks, boys. Simple as. But obviously, if you know the Predacons, they combine into something absolutely horrific. That's right. You get to go against Predaking in this mode. But that's getting a bit too far ahead. So what I want to talk about is how this game plays. So obviously, uh, when it comes to this mode, you're going against this AI deck and you're going against what the Predacons are doing. So there is an already built deck for you guys to follow. So on the screen right now is a deck list for what the Predacons should have in their battle deck or their battle card deck. 
Uh, you can pause the video now and uh, write down and take a copy of all this. But it also is available when you download all this through Brian's link. So you don't have to worry too much. So there's your lists that you're going to run for battle cards. Awesome. That's the Predacons taken care of. Then you've got the AI cards you print out and then you shuffle them into making the AI deck. Now, there is something in this mode that is very, very interesting, which is called the hunt tokens. Now, obviously, the Predacons are out there trying to hunt and kill you, which is very, very thematic and really, really cool. But how on earth do the hunt tokens work? So with the hunt tokens, guys, they actually grant benefits to the Predacons. So with the hunt tokens from zero to six, they have really no effect. But then from uh, if they have seven to nine tokens, uh, each Predacon reveals and plays an additional battle card when directed to do so. So on that AI card where it states you can draw a battle card, you draw an additional one. And then obviously if they get 10 tokens or more, there you go. On the next AI turn, they combine into Predaking. Now, how they generate hunt tokens is quite cool. So you uh, add hunt tokens to the, the basically the chart that I'm showing on the screen. When a Predacon survives an attack from an Autobot, so it, if it survives from one of your attacks, and also if the Predacon battle deck is reshuffled, you get to add one token for that, guys. But they get to add two tokens when other stuff happens, such as a Predacon getting KO'd or an Autobot being KO'd only during battle. So not when uh, it gets killed by other things, but only during battles they get um, two tokens. So obviously, the AI plays itself. And in the game that I'm doing, you'll get to see how it interacts and a ton of fun to go along with that. So with that being said, guys, hopefully you guys are going to watch this battle report and test it out because Brian wants some really solid feedback on this. And trust me, I'm going to talk about some feedback at the end of this video as well. So without further ado, guys, hopefully you enjoy it. And this is The Wild Hunt, Kill or Be Killed, here on Bleep Top Productions. Okay, guys, so this is the scenario. We've set it all up. Uh, and yeah, we're going to take on the Predacons, which I'm really looking forward to doing. I'm running the Omnibots, which should be a ton of fun because it's the first time using them on the channel. I've been uh, playtesting and wanting to build with them ever since I picked up my uh, pack from uh, one of my dear friends. And I'm really excited about it. So how the scenario starts, guys, obviously the Autobot player goes first, so that will be me. So what we're going to do is I've shuffled their deck, I've shuffled my deck, and I've shuffled the AI deck. So we don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully we can get a win, but I've played this a little bit off camera with other lists, and it is hilarious. Like, the Predacons are really, really good. I think Brian's done a really good job. And just to reiterate, or however you say that word, uh, this is just a test. Uh, like, it's not even finalised yet. This is just a, a bit of a testing for this. So uh, things might be subject to change when you watch this or when the final product comes out, it might be completely different. But I wanted to put a, get a video together for my good friend Brian and I haven't done a video uh, for Transformers like this in a while so I wanted to do something a bit special for him. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. I'm going to draw four cards because I'm going first and because I am the Omnibots, I get to play a weapon, an armour and a utility. In, from my hand in to play and what I've got is a little bit of a mixed bag guys I'm not gonna lie uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm hilariously gonna put a shoulder holster onto a downshift which basically grants him to have an extra weapon slot and then I'm going to hold it there because I only have I have another uh, equipment but I'm not 100% sure I want to play it because it is a handheld blaster. It's not that great. So without further ado let's have a look what we've got. Um, I believe I want to lead with camshaft don't I? Yes I am going to lead with camshaft so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip camshaft and I'm going to attack into uh, headstrong because headstrong has brave. So I have to target him, and he's also got Safeguard 3, so even if I do a ton of damage to him, he can only take 3 uh, if I haven't got any damage on him, which I haven't. So we're going to send Camshaft into Headstrong. So we're looking at an attack of 4 at the moment, 4, and then White, Pip. Okay, this was really well shuffled, Lee. So we're looking at 4, 5, 6. So we're doing 6 to 3 at the moment, then Headstrong is going to do his defensive flips, which is 1, 
two, which is uh, no uh, blue pips flip there, so he'll be taking three damage anyway, because he blocks three, uh, but he's got safeguard three anyway, so to start off, Headstrong will get three damage put on him, but because we've done damage to a Predacon, uh, we'll have a quick look at the scenario pack, which is coming up on the screen, and as you can see on there, it says, uh, if a Predacon survives an attack from an Autobot, add one token to the hunt tokens, which I have just done. So they are basically one uh, token out of ten. Now obviously as you can see, they when they get to seven and nine, they can get to play more additional cards. When they get to ten or more, that's when the big boy comes out. So that gets a little bit scary. So without further ado, I'm going to clear up this board and then we're going to get straight into the next turn. Okay, so we're back and what we're going to do now is we're going to see who is going to be attacking for uh, the Predacons. So let's have a look at the AI deck and we have Razor Claw, the leader of the uh, Predacons is going to go first. So we're going to follow his AI behavior card. Uh, so on the screen right now you'll be able to see it and it states for number one, if the AI has not yet flipped a character this turn, flip Razor Claw to its other mode. So let's find Razor Claw. There he is and we'll flip him. So in this mode guys, uh, he has bold two and he says this can attack untapped characters as though they were tapped. So he's still keeping along lines with the original Predacon uh, of Razor Claw. So, uh, number two, if the AI has not yet revealed a battle card this turn, reveal one and play it on Razor Claw if um, applicable. So let's have a look what card they draw. Wow, he starts the game with a force field, guys. That is a very strong start for uh, Razor Claw. So Razor Claw has a force field put on him, and then we'll go on to the third and final step, which is attack an enemy character using the following. Uh, the highest stars. Now, the highest stars out of the Omnibots is Overdrive, and because Razor Claw can attack untapped characters, he's gonna be going into Overdrive first. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this AI card back over here because we don't need it anymore, and we're going to go Razor Claw into Overdrive. So. Let's see what he gets. So he gets bold two. So we're looking at one, two, bold two. Okay, so Razor Claw is coming at four, five, six, seven attack already, guys. That's pretty horrific. I'm not gonna lie. So uh, we're gonna go into overdrive. Uh, so we're looking at one, two. That is not bad for overdrive right there. So we're looking at one, two, three, four. So he's blocking four from seven, so Overdrive will be taking three damage from that attack. So we'll put a three token on him, and that is their interaction. So I've got no cards to take, and neither does the Predacons. So with that being said, let's get straight into the next turn. Okay, we are back, and it is my turn. So I'm going to draw a card, and we can figure it out from here. I am liking how this is looking. So what I'm gonna do, to begin with, is I am going to play um, Start Your Engines for my action. And Start Your Engine states, flip each of your characters from bot mode to car mode. So we're gonna flip Camshaft uh, to there, and I can untap one of my cars. So I'm going to untap Camshaft. Fantastic, so that's a really good card to start the game with. So that's my action done. So now I need to look for an upgrade. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a Matrix of Leadership onto Overdrive, which gives him plus one attack. But um, if you put this on a leader, each of your other characters gets plus one attack and plus one pierce. So that is very, very tasty. So uh, going again, we're gonna do the same play again, guys. Quite, quite repetitive this deck is a little bit. We're gonna flip with Camshaft. Uh, to flip into that mode, and the only legal target is Razor Claw because he is tapped and I can't do anything else. So we're going Camshaft in to Razor Claw. So let's have a look at this overall. So he's starting with an attack of five, thanks to the Matrix, and we're going one, two, white, pip. Oh, that's a very good hit. That's a very good hit. So we're looking at uh, four, five, six, seven, eight attack with Camshaft with Pierce one. So uh, Razor Claw, on the other hand, is going to defend, and we're going one and two. So he defends four out of four, five, six, seven, eight. So four and four is four. He takes four damage, and unfortunately, doesn't pop his force field. So he's going to take four damage. But guys, like we stated earlier, uh, when we attacked Headstrong, 
So there we go, we'll put the four tokens on there. Uh, as you can see uh, on the screen, a Predagon survived an attack from an lower part, you add another hunt counter on. So we go from one, two, two. So that's quite unfortunate, uh, but there is some damage on the board looking pretty tasty already. So without further ado, I'm gonna do some cleaning up and then we'll get straight into the next turn. Okay, we are back. We've cleaned up the uh, the board a little bit from all the cards being played and stuff, and we're going straight into the Predacons turn. And the next AI deck is Dive Bomb. That's right, the uh, Philemus, uh, the Angry Falcon Hawk, whatever you want to call it. I call it the Angry Pheasant because it just looks like a pheasant to me. Uh, but anyway, with that being said. Uh, dive Bomb on his AI behavior card says, if the AI has not yet flipped a character this turn, flip Dive Bomb to its other mode. So we are going to flip Dive Bomb. And as you can see on the screen, guys, it says, when this attacks, your opponent chooses one of their upgrades and scraps it. And when it damages an enemy, repair one damage from each of your Predacons. So this is looking pretty scary already, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, then, we're going to follow the next part of the AI card, which is, if the AI has not revealed a battle card this turn, reveal one and play it on Dive Bomb if applicable. So, we're going to look at the card, and the card is Fragtoss. So we're going to play Fragtoss, guys, and it says, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. If your starting team was only Decepticons, your opponent does one more damage to that chosen character. So, what we're going to do, because it's completely random, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's see what the outcome is. And it's 1, so Downshift is going to be taking 2 damage thanks to Frog Toss. Well, technically 1, and then another 1 because they started with all of their, uh, their team being Decepticons. So that is that bit. Now we an attack an enemy using the following targeting priority, which is the lowest shield, lowest health, or the lowest stars, but unfortunately uh, it has to go into camshaft because uh, camshaft is the only one tapped. So let's just move that out into the played area over the way. And now we're gonna see dive bomb. So when uh, this attacks, your opponent chooses one of their upgrades and scraps it. So the first things first, I'm unfortunately gonna get rid of shoulder holster. I was really looking forward to trying to use that because Obviously, Matrix is a little bit better, so the shoulder holster has now been scrapped, guys, and gone into my uh, KO pile or scrap pile or whatever you want to call it. Now, uh, when he attacks and when he damages an enemy, repair one from each of your Predacons. This could get dangerous, guys. So, let's have a look. So, he's going into camshaft, so he's only got uh, three. So, we're going one, two, white, pip. Okay, so he has got an attack of four do, uh, currently and camshaft has a defense of one. So let's have a quick check with cam check. So one and two and, oh, he's not melee. So this is going to be annoying. So he has defended for three. Uh, dive bomb has done an attack of four. So he's actually gonna take one damage, uh, camshaft is, but this is where the kicker is. When this damages an enemy, which he definitely has, uh, repair one damage from each of your Predacons. So, uh, Headstrong goes down to two from three. Razor Claw goes down from four to three. And that's kind of a really big unfortunate thing because oh, I really didn't want that to trigger. So uh, some healing going across the board for the Predacons. Uh, and um, that's about it. I've got no cards to flip. Um, so unfortunately that's it for this turn. So I'm gonna do some cleaning up and then we'll be back with the next turn. All right, so we're back for my next turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a card as normal and we're gonna see what we can do. Now, uh, what we want to do is we will hilariously play a Noble's Blaster on Downshift. And what we will do is we will flip Downshift. Now, Downshift has an ability here, guys. It says when one of your Omnibots with a weapon attacks, it gets bold one until the end of turn equal to the number of Omnibots that have a weapon. So he's got a built-in bold one here because we've only got one on the board. So that's looking pretty tasty for us. I do not want to play anything else currently at the moment. So we're gonna leave it there. And I just, um, I'm a bit wary of these hunt tokens, to be honest. So we're having a look across the board. Let me just put um, Fractos in the discard there. Uh, I feel like we should spread it out, uh, the damage a little bit because if Predator King comes uh, out on the board with not a lot of health on him, we can try and kill him. So uh, we'll go into Dive Bomb, why not? So 
Downshift is going to attack and he is going to go into Dive Bomb. So, uh, he's starting with an attack of 4, 5, 6, 7, Pierce 3 at the moment, so that's pretty darn good. So then we're going 1 and 2, White uh, Pip. Right, okay, so he is ranged, so he gets another Pierce. So he will be Pierce 4, but his attack is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, Pierce 4 onto Dive Bomb. So now let's do Dive Bomb's defensive flips, which is 1 and 2. So he's going to defend 3. So uh, what we're looking at is 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, 7 and 3 is 4. He's going to take 4 damage, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these tokens on here to say that he's taken 4 damage, but... Okay guys, it wouldn't be a Bleeped Up Productions uh, battle report without saying we make mistakes so you don't have to. So unfortunately, my math was completely wrong. But like I say, I'm terrible at math and I'm really, really bad. I've counted multiple times during this whole solo mode and you've seen that. And I'll tell you what it is, it's the matrix of leadership. I always forget about the matrix of leadership. So what I might need to do, I might need to make a token or something whenever I play it and then I'm like, yes, I've got to remember the plus one attack from this card. So without further ado, let's get straight back into this mode. Because um, uh, he survived uh, an attack from an Autobot, a hunt counter goes on it again. So we're looking at three guys over here. Uh, is the grand total at the moment for hunt counters. Uh, now, let's have a look what we can do. So what I'm going to do, because the Predacons unfortunately cannot uh, take any cards, so we're going to put them immediately in their discard pile. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to get rid of a handheld blaster for sparring gear, because I feel like Camshaft might need to have that next turn. Well, on my next turn. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to just put all the rest of these in my discard, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into the next Predacon turn. Now, uh, we're going to reveal the next AI deck, and it is Rampage. So, Rampage's AI behavior card, guys, states, If the AI has not yet flipped a character this turn, flip Rampage to another mode. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a cheeky flip, and here we go. So, uh, in this mode, Rampage has um, Pierce 3, and when this attacks, reveal the top card of your battle deck. Uh, for each battle icon it has, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. So that is very, very tasty for Rampage. So, uh, the next uh, um, part of the AI card states, if the AI has not revealed a battle card this turn, reveal one and play it. So let's see what the Predacon deck has for him. He has a Bashing Shield. So unfortunately, uh, the Bashing Shield will go uh, on Rampage, but there is no armors on my side, luckily enough, to get rid of. So he just gets a plus one extra defense, which takes it from two to three, which is pretty darn good. And then he states for his third thing, attack an eligible enemy character character at random. So, we've got downshift and we've got camshaft uh, ready for uh, being attacked. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3 on downshift and we're going to do 4, 5, 6 on camshaft. So let's have a look. It's going to go on camshaft. Okay, so what we're going to do is rampage is going to tap guys and he is going to attack uh, camshaft. So he's got an attack of 3, pierce 3 at the moment and 1, 2. So he's got 3 Pierce three, um, so we know Camshaft's guaranteed to take three damage, uh, but we've got to do our defensive flips, so let's have a look. One, two, white, pip. Okay, so he blocks three uh, with one, two, three, but unfortunately he has Pierce three, so Camshaft is going to be taking three damage from this attack. Okay guys, it wouldn't be a Bleeped Up Productions uh, battle report without saying we make mistakes so you don't have to. So unfortunately, I forgot to trigger Rampage's ability here, guys. So what I forgot to trigger, as, as you can see on the card, it says when this attacks, reveal the top card of your battle deck. And then for each battle icon it has, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. So what I was supposed to do was when before... Um, rampage attacks. I was supposed to reveal the card and see if any additional damage was going to be put out across any of the other characters. So unfortunately, I forget this trigger, uh, and uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. But yeah, like we say on Bleed Top Productions, we make mistakes, so you don't have to. So uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get straight back into this solo mode. Uh, the Predacons, again, do not have a... Um 
uh, should we say, do, do not have anything to take, so we put them to the side. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to get rid of a rollout and I'm going to get another sparring gear because I'm going to try and get some uh, some tough shenanigans going because I feel like we're taking quite a bit of damage already and I don't want that to happen. So that will go to my KO area. The AI card is done, so we'll put that in the discard part for the AIs and we'll go straight into my next turn. So what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a card. Awesome, that is rather tasty. Uh, what we're going to do, actually, because this is actually going to work out quite well in our favour, is I'm going to put increased durability on Overdrive, which can help him out because it will give him plus four extra health, taking him health, his health from 12 to 16, which is very, very decent. So what we're going to do uh, for our turn, we are going to flip Overdrive to his other mode, and when one of your Omnibots has a utility, um, which I believe he does, it gets focused until the end of battle equal to the number of Omnibots. So, uh, we're going to be getting Focus 1, which allows us to look at the top card, and if we don't want it, we can scrap it, which is pretty useful. So, what we're going to look at is we need to take something off the board. I feel that we should try and kill... Hmm... Do I try and kill Dive Bomb? Yeah, I feel like that might be the way forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Sergeant uh, Overdrive is going to go into uh, Dive Bomb. So we're going to use Plan 1. So we're going to look at the top card, and the top card is Noble's Blaster. So you know what? That gives us nothing, but then the following turn we can take it. So you know what? I'm actually going to keep that. So it doesn't really help us on an attack, but... It helps us out next turn when we can go for a shot. So, uh, we're going to do some flips then. One, two. And what we've got here is he has got range, so he gets another pierce. So, we're just looking at four, five. Five attack, pierce one is what we're looking at here. So, we're going to do the flips for uh, dive bomb, which is going to be one and two. Oh, he tanked a lot of that, guys. So, we're looking at two, three, four, five. So, with that... Um, he blocks all of it, but we do have Pierce 1 thanks to flipping a Master of Metallicato and having that icon. So we're going to do one more damage to Dive Bomb, taking him to 5. Now, because, guys, he survives, uh, we're going to add another Hunt counter on there. So that's kind of unfortunate for us, but at the same time, still pretty good. So we're going to uh, put the uh, Predacons uh, AI deck to the side. We're also going to draw this Noble's Blaster because we're going to get rid of that sparring gear we got last time uh, and we're going to put that in our uh, discard pile uh, and we're going to go straight into the next turn for the Predacons. Now uh, we've obviously got Headstrong and Tantrum to remain but we're going to see what is going to happen so let's have a look at the AI and it's going to be Headstrong guys so if the AI has not flipped a character this turn you may flip Headstrong to his other mode so we are going to flip Headstrong so Headstrong is flipped. He still has Brave here, guys, which is rather good. And uh, when this defends, deal one damage to the attacker. So we've got to be aware of that because that can get a little bit out of hand. So uh, that is the first part of the AI done. The second part, if the AI has not flipped a battle card this turn, flip one and play it on Headstrong if applicable. So let's have a look. We're going to draw a card. And again, it's another Frag Toss, which is pretty darn good. So uh, again, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see where this goes. Uh, six is going to go on Overdrive. So Overdrive is going to take one damage. And then because uh, the starting team was all Decepticons, he's going to take another one. So it takes his grand total from three to five, which is unfortunate. And when this takes none, no, that's just him. Right. Okay. So with that being said, we'll put that in the play area out of the way. And then Headstrong says, attack the enemy with the following targeting priority, the highest attack. So we're having a look here, and the highest attack is actually downshift because he's got four, five, six, and if I included the matrix, it would be seven. So he's gonna go into downshift. So with that being said, he is going to attack. So Headstrong is attacking. So he's got an attack of three, and he's going into downshift. So we're looking at one, Two, so we're looking at four PS2 at the moment. That is what Headstrong is doing to uh, downshift. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip the defensive part. Um, none of that happens, so we're going one and two. What a gangster. So um, downshift defense for one, two, three, four. So he blocks 
the normal attack, but because um, Headstrong has Pierce 2, he's going to take 2 damage here. So he's going to take downshift to 4 health, uh, well, 4 damage taken. Uh, what I'm going to do now is obviously the Predacons, this is going to stay in the play area. And these are also going to stay in the play area because how it works now, because I'm fully tapped out in a normal game. Uh, the opponent will keep on attacking with other stuff in order. So Tantrum is actually just going to be the last one to activate and obviously you can tell I'm going to reveal the AI card. He is the last one to activate. We don't need to follow any of the AI behavior cards because it's just a normal attack. So after you've done all your attacking and you're tapped out, anything that's revealed from the AI deck, AI deck after that it just basically grants you, you know, that person is going to attack. So Tantrum. So Tantrum is basically going to have to choose who to go into. Uh, so we are going to actually look at his AI card because we might need to see where he will go into for his attack. So attack an enemy with the last enemy to attack. And the last enemy to attack was Overdrive. So that's not actually pretty good. So Overdrive is going to get hit by Tantrum. So Tantrum has got three, four... Just an attack of four. So Overdrive needs to defend. So we're looking at uh, one and two. White uh, Pip. Okay, so he's defending two and Tantrum's coming at him for four. So Overdrive is going to be taking two damage from this attack. So uh, on his card, does it have anything that we need? No, it does not. So I've got no cards I want to take. So they're all gonna go into the uh, discard pile and all the cards that were drawn slash flipped by the Predacons are going to go into their uh, lovely uh, discard pile and also the played cards are going there in there now and we're going to shuffle the AI deck and uh, we're going to clean up all this uh, so everyone's going to come back tapped and it's going to come back to the Autobots turn and uh, yeah we'll see how we get on. Okay guys we are back everything is untapped uh, there's a lot of damage across the board on both sides uh, but yeah, let's see how we get on with our next turn. So, we're going to draw a card. Interesting. That doesn't really help us, unfortunately. Um, but we are going to put a Noble's Blaster on Camshaft. And then what we're going to do for our turn... I don't want to play this action yet because I feel like won't, we won't get the maximum ability out of it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go uh, with downshift. Now, unfortunately, headstrong has break, so we have to go into headstrong. So with that, downshift is going to come in on um, on headstrong. But now, because we have another weapon out on the board, he's gonna get bold two now instead of bold one, which is really good, so that helps us out in our case. So we're going to attack headstrong. So we're looking at one, two, and then we're looking at bold two, so one, two not that great of flips but we can we can live with that so we're looking at four five six seven attack of seven on two headstrong so he's currently at three so let's do our flips for him one two white pip okay so he gets another one so that will be an attack of um so he's got a defense of four and i believe ours was four five six seven Eight even, sorry, because I keep forgetting about the Matrix. Eight. And he's got an attack of four. So he will take four damage with that. So he'll actually go to six, which is a decent number for us. But there is an ability that's going to trigger now, which I should have done at the beginning, which is uh, when this defends, deal one damage to the attacker. So downshift would actually go from four to five now. But that's quite key because obviously that would trigger before the attack. So obviously he could die if he's at da dangerous health. But... Um, we are slowly windling down the, uh, let's just say, the Rhino, but another trigger happens, guys, which is, unfortunately, on the screen, as you can tell, guess what? A Predacon survives an attack from an Autobot, so another Hunt counter goes on, so we're going to five Hunt counters on the board, which is quite unfortunate. So, with this being said, I'm going to clean up a little bit, and then we'll get straight into the next turn. Okay, so we're here at the beginning of our next turn. I've got no cards to actually defend with now, so I need to shuffle. Uh, but we are going into the next Predacon turn, so we're really looking forward to seeing what's going down, because um, if it's not Headstrong, I'm happy, because that means we can actually hit another one. But um, Dive Bomb and Headstrong have seen better days, but to be honest, we've taken quite a bit of damage as well. 
Uh, and the Predacons are halfway there to getting Predaking, so I'm kind of worried about that. So, we've got them sorted, they're shuffled. So, let's go to the AI deck. What have we got? We have Tantrum, who is going to attack first. Okay, or activate first, shall we say. So, uh, the AI uh, behavior card states, if the AI has not yet flipped a character this turn, flip Tantrum to another mode. So, uh, we're going to flip Tantrum, and I know before we say anything, he's not Rhinox. That's fantastic. Thank you, Brian, for clarifying that because, yeah, to all of us who are diehard fans, it's Tantrum, not Rhinox. Enough said. But anyway, when he flips to this mode, um, he has, while this has four or more damage, he gets plus three attack. And he has a revenge ability, which is do one damage to each character. Yowzers. That is a bit of a problem. Right, with that, we're then going into the second step, which is if the AI has not revealed a battle card this turn, Reveal one and play it. So, we will. Let's see what the Predacon is going to have. He's going to have a minor medikit put on him, guys. So that means he's going to get two additional health. So, to be honest, that's possibly the best thing for Tantrum with getting four or more damage on him. That's... That's kind of annoying, I'm not going to lie. That's a, a really good draw for the Predacons right there. So, uh, the thing after this is attack an enemy using the following targeting priority. Uh, last enemy to attack first thing, and then the highest and then the lowest. But obviously, downshift attacked him first, so he is gonna go into downshift. So, uh, let's see how we crack on with this. So Tantrum's coming in for three, and we're gonna do his flip. So we're looking at one, two, so we're looking at four pierce one on downshift. Now downshift's gonna do his flips, which is one, two. Uh, right, he actually defends for four, but uh, there is pierce one there. So he is going to take one from that, so he's very lucky there uh, to get those flips. Um, but yeah, um, that was a pretty darn good turn. So the AI deck can go over there because we've activated Tantrum. Uh, there's no cards for me to take, they can't take any cards to take. So uh, we'll come right back with my next turn. Alright guys, so it's my turn, I'm going to draw a card. Oh, we're, we're going to have a turn here now guys, I think. We might have a turn. Oh, oh, oh. Oh yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are actually going to put our sparring gear onto downshift because he's quite low on health, but because we've got two armors on the board, um, he's going to have tough two now, which is pretty darn decent. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into camshaft. He needs to do some damage, and unfortunately it has to go into tantrum. But He's pretty decent, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Tantrum with Camshaft. Now, basically, we're looking at four, five, six, seven base attack. That's not bad. So seven onto Tantrum, and then we're looking at one, two, um, and then he it goes, when one of your Omnibots with a weapon attacks, it gets bold until the end equal to the number of Omnibots with things. So he actually gets bold two now, which is pretty darn good. So we're looking at bold two, one, two. Okay, Camshaft is a specialist, so this uh, Master of Metallic Arto pip here is actually going to count towards us, so that's pretty darn good. So we're looking at four, five, six, seven, eight attack on Tantrum. That's pretty good. So eight, and then we've got the flips. One, two. Oh, there it is. There's a Hanhao Blaster flipped. So Tantrum is now technically blocking four out of our eight, so he is going to be taking four damage, guys. So that is quite unfortunate. I really wish it was more, but hey, we can live with that. Uh, but obviously, guys, on the screen now, yeah, uh, Predacon survived an attack. So we are going to put a hunt counter on the board. They are literally one away, guys, from triggering their first ability, which each Predacon reveals and plays an additional battle card. So that's kind of scary. So we're almost getting towards the end game here a little bit, guys. So um, what we're going to do is, again, I'm going to clean up everything and we're going to come straight back with the next turn. Okay, we are back, guys, and it is the Predacons' turn. So we're going to look at the AI deck, and the AI deck is Dive Bomb. So we are going to follow the AI behavior. So uh, Dive Bomb, if the AI has not flipped yet, flip Dive Bomb to another mode. So we're going to flip Dive Bomb back to his Hawk mode, or whatever you want to call it. He has stealth in this mode, but when this attacks, your opponent chooses one of their upgrades and scraps it. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. So even when it attacks, I've got to decide what to scrap. Oh, that's frustrating. That's very frustrating indeed. Right, the next part of the AI card says, when not, um, 
If the AI has not revealed a battle card this turn, reveal one and play it on Dive Barn if able. So let's have a gander. We have a look. He's got Fight for Position, guys. That's going to give him a cheeky bold two this turn. Which, again, is quite unfortunate for our guys. But here we go. Attack an enemy character for the third step is using the following targeted priority. The lowest armor. The lowest armor is tied between both these guys, so that's fine. The lowest health, uh, the lowest health will be actually downshift now, so that's kind of scary. So yeah, dive bomb is going to have to go into downshift. So what we're going to do is dive bomb is going to come in, and because of his ability there, guys, he says I have to. Uh, basically, your opponent chooses one of their upgrades and scraps it. So I need to choose one. Ugh. I'm going to be a rebel and get rid of... Mm, oh, this is so frustrating. You know what, just in case he dies, I mean, I'm going to get rid of the Noble's Blaster off downshift. I don't mind that, but I need to get rid of it. Just in case he does die from this attack, I do want to at least have a weapon on the board. So, right, we're going to come in then. Uh, bombshell has bold two for this attack, so we're looking at one, two, bold, two. Okay. So... Uh, uh, dive Bomb is coming in currently at 3, 4, 5, Pierce 2. Okay, and um, Downshift here is going to get Tough 2. Another Tough 2 here, because I think one of your Omni has an armor and defends it has Tough equal to the number of Omnibots that have an armor. So we've got 1, 2, so we're getting Tough 2, which is pretty sweet. So we're Tough 2 and another Tough 2, so we might survive this, guys. So we're looking at 1, 2, and then... Tough one, tough two, and then from the Omnibot ability, tough one, tough two. Okay, so Dive Bomb's coming in for five. Uh, downshift has one. Uh, he is not that, so still one, two, three, four, five. So he's blocks all five, but there is some Pierce over here, guys. So he's got Pierce two. So Downshift will actually take two damage from this attack. So he will take two from that, but flipping those extra cards kept him alive, which is good. Uh, again, I've got no cards to pick up. Uh, dive Bomb is done. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to clean up this uh, little bit of mess here, and then we're going to get straight into the next turn. Okay, guys, so we're back, and unfortunately, there's no cards for the Decepticon Predacons to actually draw. So this actually triggers a thing on their uh, scenario pack. So if you have a look, um, when the uh, Predacon battle deck is reshuffled, you add one token. So, the next turn, guys, it is going to trigger them playing two battle cards, if applicable, obviously, during their turn, which is kind of unfortunate. So, that's a bit scary, I'm not going to lie. Quite scary, indeed. So, that's shuffled, and it is our turn. So, I'm looking for some good shenanigans here. That is unfortunate. So, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to play a javelin, this might actually work for us a little bit. Uh, we're going to put a javelin onto um, Overdrive because he is a ranged character. And what we're going to do is we have to... We can't go into Dive Bomb because he's got stealth. So we have to go into Tantrum. So we need to try and kill Tantrum, I think, here. Because I think that'll probably be the best motive, maybe? So what we're going to do is Sergeant Overdrive is going to come in. First things first, before we even attack, if it's on a ranged character and this attacks, I can scrap this and do two damage to an enemy. What I'm going to do, I'm going to spread some love out, I think. I'm going to put two damage on Rampage. So that's scrapped, and I'm going to put two damage on Rampage, because if I spread out the love a little bit, when he combines to Predaking, it can, can work in our favour. Now, uh, Overdrive obviously states here, he gets focus for each utility on an Omnibot. He's got one, so we can focus one and have a look at it. Oh, I really wanted that this turn, but yeah, we're gonna have to keep it, unfortunately, because it'll help out our attack. So, we're going one, two. He doesn't have a weapon, so he's gonna get no bold from this, but we're looking at an attack of four, five, six, seven into Tantrum. Right, and Tantrum's defensive flips is one, two. He defends for three. So, we're looking at four, five, six, seven, three is going to be four. So, four and four is eight. 
So if I grab one here, five, six, seven, eight, there we go, that works in our favor. Uh, and yeah, um, unfortunately for some, uh, let's just say Tantrum survived an attack, guys. So another hunt token goes on the board. So we are currently at a total of eight, which is kind of scary because, you know, he's two away from forming Predator King. But to be honest, I've done enough damage at the moment. Hopefully, we can work it out. Uh, hopefully, pull off a win. Because I've played this a couple of times. I haven't actually won yet because Predator King has just stomped me into the ground. So, without further ado, we are going to get straight into the next turn after I've done some cleaning up. Okay, we are back. And let's see what, Predic uh, what Predacon is going to activate next. And it is Headstrong. So... Headstrong, let's look at the behavior card. If the AI has not flipped a character this turn, flip Headstrong to another mode. So, Headstrong is going to another mode. He's gonna flip back and he's got Safeguard 3 in this mode and he's also got Brave. But, Safeguard 3 doesn't matter because he's got 6 damage on him. So, uh, if the AI has not flipped battle cards this turn, flip one and play it on him. But obviously because of our hunt counter, Headstrong is gonna benefit from having to this turn possibly so let's have a look his first card is leap of faith holy cow what a card to pull right so leap of faith scrap the top card of your deck you may play that card so let's have a look that card is bad attitude what a pull for the predacons right so bad attitude states if you began the game with Decepticon, Decepticon characters repair one damage from each of your characters then do one damage to each Autobot. Wow. Okay, so Tantrum goes from 8 to 7. Uh, Headstrong goes down from 6 to 5. Dive Bomb goes to 4 from 5. Uh, Razor Claw goes from 3 to 2. Oh my gosh, guys. This is ridiculous. And then Rampage heals one. So going from two to one. But then I take a damage across the board because of bad attitude. So overdrive takes one, which will take him from seven to eight. Uh, cam shaft will go from four to five now, which, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. And then we've got downshift going on to nine. Wow, what a card. And that's the first one from Leap of Faith. So then the next card from Leap of Faith, we are going to have a handheld blaster and that will be put on Headstrong. So that's 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 just one card, guys. From one battle, battle flip, Leap of Faith, that's absolutely ridiculous. So um, we're still on the second step because they haven't technically drew their second card because Leap of Faith just allows you to do loads of cards. So their second card is, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? No, hand-to-hand -hand combat is played. So choose one of your characters. When it attacks this turn and doesn't have a weapon, it gets plus three attack until the end of turn. Unfortunately, Headstrong has a weapon thanks to Leap of Faith. So unfortunately, this is played, but nothing really happens. So we've just dodged a bullet there, guys, because he would have come in for six, but he has got bold one. But hey, we've dodged a bullet, but I still think it's going to be very, very brutal. So they're in the played area for the, um, for the Predacons. Now... Let's go into the next part of the AI thing. So, um, attack an enemy character following the target priority, the highest attack. And the highest attack is going to be camshaft because we're looking at four, five, six, seven because of the matrix. So yes, right. Headstrong is going in. So we're looking at Headstrong coming in to attack camshaft and he is going to have bold one on him as well. So, let's have a look. We're going to go one, two. Oh, my days. Bold. Oh, what an attack. I'm so grateful for that handheld blaster because otherwise this could have hurt a lot more. So, Headstrong is currently coming in for six pierce one on Camshaft. Now, uh, Camshaft, um, when one of your Omnibots with an armor defends, it gets, plus, it gets tough for each armor. But unfortunately, he doesn't have an armor. So, he won't benefit from this unfortunately I don't think so he's just going to go straight into him so one two white pit okay that that softens the blow a little bit but we're looking at three four five six pierce one on headstrong we're looking at one two three four so we're blocking four of the six so um camshaft is going to take 
another two damage. So it's just going to take a peek too. Holy cow. What a turn that was. That was pretty scary. So what I'm going to do, because the Predacons can't take any cards, I'm going to get rid of my Handheld Blaster for a Sparring Gear because that's going on somebody uh, on my next turn, which is luckily enough okay. But uh, this is all staying in the played area, guys, because um, unfortunately for some, we still have Predacons that are, uh, let's just say, I oh, caramba, are still ready to go. So we're looking at the AI card. The next one to activate is Rampage. So Rampage is going to attack. So then we look at the bottom bit and it says, attack an eligible enemy at character at random. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see where they're gonna be going. Uh, two, it is going in to downshift. Okay, this could be the end of him. So we're looking at, well, with Pierce three, it will be the end of him. Oh no. So Rampage is gonna be coming into downshift. So uh, Rampage is gonna do his flips, which is one, two. So, okay, he's doing four Pierce four. So that is horrific. Um, and now downshift is actually going to get um, two flips and then because of an armor here and an armor here he's oh no he is going to get an armor there so that's fine so when one of your omnibots with an armor defends it gets tough here so he's going to get tough four technically but it doesn't matter because he's dead to pierce so we're looking at one two white pip one two three four okay so unfortunately those flips are useless because downshift just basically explodes, which is really, really rough. Incredibly rough. So, um, this is where it gets really interesting because that's in, uh, them done. They go to the played area, just like those go to the played area for the Predacons. We make mistakes so you don't have to. So unfortunately, I forgot to trigger Rampage's ability here, guys. So what I forgot to trigger, as, as you can see on the card, it says, when this attacks, reveal the top card of your battle deck. And then for each battle icon it has, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. And uh, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, like we say on Bleed Top Productions, we make mistakes so you don't have to. So uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get straight back into this solo mode. Um, downshift explodes. So that will go to the scrap pile. But this is where it gets interesting because the um, Predacons have KO'd somebody. They get two tokens, guys. So that means on the next AI turn, um, they combine into Predaking because it's still their turn. They're still doing attacks. It isn't going to trigger that But I know that Predaking is going to be coming out next turn, which is kind of scary. So Razor Claw is going to be the last one to attack. I'm guessing. Let's have a look at the AI card. It is And he says attack an enemy character following the target priorities the highest stars. So he is going to go into overdrive Okay Let's see how we can do, because he's got bolt in, bold two. So we're looking at this. So we're going one, two, bold, two. Okay, so Razor Claw has an attack of four, five, six. Okay, so um, Overdrive is going to get a tough one because he's got an armor, so that's good. And he's got a utility, so he can plan. So we're gonna have a look at the card. We're gonna keep it, because it's rollout, it's very good. So we're looking at one, two, and then tough one. Oh boy, this is going to hurt possibly. So we're looking at four, five, six, and he is blocking one, two. So he's taking four. Ouch, he is taking four guys. So somehow he lives. Like this is pretty dangerous. So we're looking at six, he's at 12. So this increased durability is keeping him alive. He's only got four health remaining guys, but that is pretty rough. So, Razor Claw attacked. I didn't tap, but we knew it was going to be Razor Claw. So, right. I don't think I've won this now, guys, because I've literally got these Autobots are on their last legs. And the next turn after, Predaking's going to come on the board and probably annihilate me. So, this could get quite interesting. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some cleaning up. And, uh, yeah, we'll get straight into the next turn. Okay guys, we're back and it's looking very hilariously bleak for me and the Autobots. I don't think we're gonna win. Just saying is all. But let's see what we could do. We're gonna draw a card. Interesting. I feel like that would be hilarious to draw because why not? So, um, 
Ooh, decisions, decisions, decisions. I think tough is probably the best way to go. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put another sparring gear on camshaft. So give him a bit more tough, so he's gonna have more toughs to try and stay alive. Uh, and we've got to go, <laughs> hilariously, into headstrong because he has brave. So what we're gonna do is camshaft is just gonna go straight into headstrong. So we're gonna flip two normally, so one, two. We've got a white pip, so I need to shuffle my cards. So far, this is probably gonna kill him, which is gonna help us against Predaking, but also at the same time, that guy is a monster, guys, and you'll see him, obviously, on the next turn of the AI, but yeah, I I've, I've didn't do enough damage, and getting that, that bad attitude out was ridiculous. Like, never see that card play. Brian, nice touch with the bad, the bad attitude, man. So, um, we've drawn two, we've got a white pit, so we're doing another one. Oh, I want it to be orange. Oh, come on, guys. This isn't looking good. So we're looking at four, five, six, seven, pierce, three on Headstrong. So seven, pierce, three. And he's blocking three already, so he's gonna live no matter what. So one, two, white, pip. Okay, so he's blocking four of the seven because of that. So uh, what we've got now is four, five, six, seven. Yeah, pierce, three. So he is blocking four, so I'm o he's only gonna take three, guys. So he lives. So yes, we make mistakes so you don't have to, but my math was completely wrong. I was supposed to do four damage with that attack instead of three. But like I say, I'm terrible at math and I'm really, really bad. And I'll tell you what it is, it's the matrix of leadership. I always forget about the matrix of leadership. So without further ado, let's get straight back into this mode. It's too late because Predaking is going to come on the battlefield and wreck my face. Predacons merge to become Predaking! Okay guys, so here he is, the big man himself, so you guys can see him a little bit better. There you go, Predator King is here and he has arrived. So how Predator King works is obviously you're only allowed to take X amount of weapons and stuff and all that other stuff, but we have a bit of a controversy here because it's the armor. Now, obviously a force field is much better than a bashing shield at the moment, so the bashing shield is actually gonna go to the scrapyard, or should we say the discard pile, but uh, they're gonna keep the handheld blaster giving him another bold one, and he's gonna keep a minor medic kit because it's a utility, giving him two more health. But Predaking has taken 22 health, or should we say he's taken 22 damage overall, and I didn't KO a single Predacon. So just gonna say guys, I think it's in the bag for Predaking. So what happens now is we get rid of the Predacon AI deck, or Predacons, should we say, because they're no longer a thing. And we're just gonna keep it simple because we have a Predaking AI uh, card. It's on the screen right now, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we are going to follow what it states. So, reveal a battle card and play it on Predaking. So we're going to flip a card. It's Enforcement Batons. So that's gonna replace the Handheld Blaster, but Enforcement Batons, when you play this, scrap an enemy weapon. The only enemy weapon on the board is Noble's Blaster, so that's gonna go. So that's the sad times for uh, for Camshaft. So obviously Handheld Blaster from Pedrokin goes to their ca uh, discard pile. Right, the second step, it says, reveal another battle card and play it on Predaking if capable. Um, wow, he's gonna have Calculated Strike, guys, giving him plus two attack and plus two pierce. I believe in the kind words of everything holy, uh, camshaft is going to get shafted. <laughs> so, uh, we're going into the next step, which is attack an enemy following this. The highest stars, the highest things, or the highest that. Obviously, camshaft is the only one that's able to be attacked because it's tapped. So, Predator King is going to come in, and his base attack at the moment, guys, is 7, 8, 9, 10. Just saying. 10 already, and he's got bold 2. Wicked and pierce two. So we're looking at one, two, bold, two. Okay, so there's another orange. So, like we were saying, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, pierce three. So, eleven, pierce three on camshaft. Come on, lad. Can he survive this? 
Right, here we go. Can he pull it out of the back? So let's have a look. So we're looking at one, two. That is a very good start. Then we're doing tough two. Here, tough two. That is a very good start. Now he gets another tough two because there's an armor here and an armor here. So another tough two. Tough two. White pit. Yes. No, I didn't want to see white or an orange. Okay, he might be dead. So we were looking at one, two, three, four, five, six. He blocks six of it, guys. That's incredible. But six is not a great number, I believe, because we're looking at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So he will take five damage, which will kill him. That white and that orange, if they were blues, he would have lived, but hey, he dies in a ball of fire. Camshaft gets shafted, but this is where it gets interesting. When this does more than enough attack damage to KO an enemy, so more than enough. So he does one more over, that's hilarious. Wow, he does one more damage over Camshaft's thing, so it will trigger, that's hilarious. So when it does more than enough attack damage to KO an enemy, your opponent chooses their other characters and does two damage to it. So we're looking at six over here. Oh God, he's gonna be live on two. So he's gonna take that. So he's gonna be at nine, so nine, 14. He's on two health overdrive now. He's on two health, guys. Oh my gosh, that is ridiculous. So with that being said, I'm gonna clean up the board a little bit because it's a bit messy because obviously Camshaft is now dead and uh, I think it's definitely a Predacon win uh, for the scenario. So let's just see how it is uh, in a second. Okay, and we're back, and it's all on overdrive, so I believe in you, sir. I believe in you. I'll draw a card. Unfortunately, that is very sad, um, because that card doesn't really work. This card can. Why not? Why not go out and have a laugh? I'm going to play Thermal Weaponry, guys, on overdrive. This could work in our favor, which is great, because basically it says, when the upgraded character is attacking, it gets pierced for each blue it hits. So... Maybe we could do some cheeky damage to Predaking, but I'm pretty positive Predaking's gonna turn us into a tin can next turn. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just attack with Overdrive. So let's have a gander. So we're looking, he's got Focus 1 because of his utility. So let's have a look. We'll get rid of Brainstorm and put that in the scrap pile because we don't want blues. We need, well, that gives us Pierce 1, but I want attack as well. So we're looking at it. One, two. Okay. So he isn't melee, so he doesn't get that blue. He isn't special, so he doesn't get that. So we're looking at four, five, six, seven attack onto Predaking. So seven at the moment is Predaking's number. So I'm doing dice so I can remember math. So we're looking at seven over here. So Predaking, a one, two. So he is going to be blocking three of that and taking four. So seven minus three is four. That is correctly good with your math. So he's taking Seven, three, four. He's taking four. Let's remember that, Lee. Number is four. So four, not two, not six. So what we can do is that to take that away and that. Perfect. Right, I am good with math, I swear. Uh, right, uh, I've got no cards to take. Predaking has no cards to take. So let's just keep the good times rolling because, hey, everybody stands. Um, but I feel like um, Overdrive is definitely not going to be standing anymore, guys, because I think Predaking is just going to kill him. So let's have a look at the AI card. Uh, reveal a battle card and play it on Predaking. So Predaking, Fragtos. Oh my gosh, um, that's gonna kill uh, Overdrive. <laughs> so Predaking is not gonna kill him. It's going to be coming down to someone, well, Predaking finding a grenade and throwing it at him because he does one damage and then another one. So we're looking at 16 with that and that. That is him dead. And that is a win for the Predacons and I got Predaking to 24 health. Unfortunately, this game, I did not get as much untaps off as possible because of cars. I didn't get a lot of start your engines. I had a prime turn where I wanted to get either turbo boosters or start your engines, and then I could have had a really fun turn. But um, yeah, that is unfortunate. But hey, the scenario is amazing. And what I wanna say right now is coming up in the next little segment of this is my overview of the whole scenario and uh, my thoughts because Brian wants feedback because this is just an alpha build guys this isn't the final thing this is like a test kind of thing so uh, yeah let's see uh, m what my final thoughts are right now 
Okay, guys, so that was the scenario, The Wild Hunt, Kill or Be Killed, created by Brian Allen from the Wreck and Roll crew. Um, so now this is my time to give a little bit of feedback because Brian really wants some feedback. Uh, first off, Brian, it's awesome. I really like how this plays. Uh, I like the AI deck. I think it's really cool. You've took a lot of time as well to make a really interesting battle deck. Like, seriously, uh, in that, I didn't honestly think um, Bad Attitude would work, and somehow it repaired everything. And then I could just imagine how some of the other characters might interact. Like, Fragtos was incredibly strong. So, and he, uh, you know, it was just really, really cool to see cards that are very Decepticon-focused actually being used in a scenario. So I'm going to give you props for that. Um, I really like how these guys play. I think it's really, really interesting. I want to try it against some really competitive decks for the Autobots because I've been doing a lot of theme lists and having a lot of fun with that. But I really, really like this mode idea that you're done, Brian. I think it's really, really cool. And um, I think everyone who's watched this video is probably going to probably download it and try it, mate. So I'm 100% I'm behind uh, this cool AI mode that you've created, this solo mode. And I am just going to challenge champion you to do more, mate. I would love, love to see some with against the Stunticons, or maybe, heck, even if you did the Autobots, so you could just build a Decepticon team going against an Autobot team. That would be really cool. Or, heck, even go um, bigger uh, and do some other really cool thematic solo modes would be really cool, because obviously we know that the guys over at Powered by Primus have done a Unicron raid, which um, my friend Dave from my podcast, One Shall Stand, One Shall Fall, absolutely loves. I absolutely love it. We've done it on this channel as well, and we rave that, and we like those different modes. So, Brian, I'm going to say keep up the good work, mate. I really like how all the Predacons interact with each other. I don't think any of them are broken. I think they're just balanced right, and I feel like it's it just works really, really well. Like, I've played seven games of it now, uh, with the deck that I used in the video, obviously now in this uh, video that I'm making, I used the Omnibots because I wanted to try them out. They did really well in another game that I played, but I didn't film. But um, they left Predaking on five health because I got all the cool combos of making sure like, oh, yeah, I've got bold here. I've got tough there. But yeah, I can tell you now, Brian, you've built something really, really cool here. And I'm just going to tell you to just keep going from strength to strength mate you've done a fantastic job and hopefully the community will embrace it with open arms because i certainly am and uh, you've converted one guy over here in the uk mate so and i know for a fact when my mate dave who's my co-host obviously from my podcast will eventually play this he will love it as well i'm gonna tell you for a fact it's gonna be freaking awesome so mate you've done a ruddy good job as we stay on those podcasts so, with that being said, guys, thank you very much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. A like is much appreciated. If you want to subscribe, hit that sub button. If you want to check out more of the Transformers TCG stuff we do, the thumbnails on the screen right now. That would be amazing. And until next time, guys, take care, have a good one, and we'll see you in the not-too-distant future for more Transformers TCG.